Hello and welcome to this video on FDM vapor smoothing and its effects on accuracy. My name is Robert French and I'm a 3D printing applications engineer with Go Engineer. We already have two other videos in this series and this one's just reflecting and seeing what could we do better to improve our vapor smoothing station. So I learned that we want to seal our container as much as possible. I had too many air holes on the last design and letting a lot of that vapor escape. Increasing the heat is another thing we can do. We want to make sure we're vaporizing that acetone, not leaving it as a liquid. And we want to have the right size container for the job. I went with a pretty big container and I'm putting small parts in it, but I stuck with the big container simply because I have a large system. I have a Fortis 450 and I want to be able to fit parts from that machine into that chamber. And then the real focus of the video today is also the effects on accuracy. What dimensional changes are we going to see of parts that are being vapor smoothed? You can see in these photos some of the improvements I made. I added somewhat of a gasket around the top edge of my tub to create a better seal to my lid. I also plugged up pretty much every hole, all in the hopes of containing more vapor. Here's some of the parts I'm going to smooth today. I have some pretty simple cubes, some pretty simple rounded parts, and I'm going to be leaving them in for 5 minute intervals at 5, 10, 15, and 20 minutes see what the effect of prolonged exposure has. I also took some quick measurements with my calipers to know what my baseline readings for sizes were before vapor smoothing. Here's a quick time-lapse video of the process. I place my parts on my tray and place it inside the vapor smoothing station and I'll be removing them at the different five minute intervals. I figure now is also a good time to make sure every hole is fully sealed and I place some tape over some of the mounting holes I have on the outside of my chamber. Here's some photos of the results. On the left we have our 5 minute exposure time, followed by 10, 15, and 20 minute moving to the right. The rounded parts, due to their geometry, don't have ideal layer line visualization towards the top of the part. We could fix this with print orientation if that's an option, but we're still getting good results from the vapor smoothing looking very smooth, but we could consider brushing the tops of these parts to make it look even better. The square parts came out great. We have almost no layer line visualization on the sides and the top is looking very smooth as well. If we look at the dimensional difference in the Z direction or the way the part was printed, we're seeing very, very little difference between the pre and post vapor smooth results. And if we look at the outside of the part, we're seeing almost no geometry change at all. So vapor smoothing is a great way to enhance the look of your parts without changing the geometry too much. I hope you enjoyed this video on FDM vapor smoothing. Hopefully it gives you some encouragement to go out and try it yourself. My name is Robert French. Thanks for watching.